it's excellent afternoon viewers it just finished um gulping a, a chilled pet bottle of uh, carbonated um, drink and then you threw the bottle into the drainage or on the road by that action you just contributed to environmental pollution which is detrimental to the earth we live in Today on Real Talk with Kike, it's all about restoring the earth because we are observing this year's celebration of World Health Day. Welcome to the show where conversation are real. My name remains Kike Lomatondao and of course I've got my sighting and some beautiful co-host on the building, <laughs> in the building. How are you doing guys? Let me start from Marshall. Marshall! Masha, I don't know. We love you. Let me, love let me you. say I, that. I love you guys too. I love you guys too. Kick it. And, and I miss you. I, I can't I can help but admire you guys each time I'm here. And um, mm. I mean, you look good. I, I like what you're putting on white and black. And uh, lolo, lolo, <laughs> polka dot. You are done in that polka Don't let chief wife. Uh, I, I love it. You're breathing on my no, She's the chief wife. You, yeah, you're exactly. the lolo, I the know. royal wife. Hi, guys. Welcome to. Uh, the show it's real talk with this beautiful fantastic lady my name is marshall anthony onoya all right <laughs> i'm always super excited to see you kike i like sunflower today hey, hey. i'm loving the i think we've got about yeah, yeah. yeah. And know, the it's not my birthday. someone's you know? birthday is next week tuesday let me just give you a bit yeah someone you know someone. that's someone it could be anybody on this table <laughs> Uh, my name is Amartin Diadebole David Lolo One. Thank you for joining us always on Real Talk with Kike. All right, many thanks. So we start off with our on, on this day in history. Please listen. On this day in history, 22nd of April 2009, exactly 13 years ago, seven high-ranking officials from the country's Electricity Regulatory Commission were charged with criminal diversion of state funds. The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, accused Chairman Ransom Owen and six of the agency's commissioners of diverting for their private use about five billion naira. According to the then head of media publicity of EFCC, Mr. Femi Baba Femi, some of the documents retrieved in their homes include share certificates and documents on banks' deposits. Apart from this, according to investigation, part of the troubles of the suspects was that they were alleged to have shared over 100 million naira each of the money suspected to belong to the commission. The source alleged that part of the documents retrieved at the home of the chairman included possible details of a 500 million naira bank lodgement into a private account. What a level of corruption and financial misappropriation of public funds. Wow, what a level of corruption <laughs> of public of public funds right there. It's mm. so sad that we're still talking about all these things back to back. We are talking about corruption year in year house. We are, you know, trying to let our leaders be accountable to a lot of things. And you still see that when it comes to character, you know, most of our leaders, I'm sorry to say this, lack character. And that is the reason why we are still facing all of these challenges. Because if, you, if you're listening to this, this happened 13 years ago. It seems as if our leaders learn how to become more corrupt. corrupt. <laughs> um, yeah, because I'm very sure this is 5 billion naira that we're talking about mm. here. But we've heard thousands more. of stories afterwards. Uh, no, no, what you get to to you know, it's so disheartening that we are even remembering a Hard day in history for such a happening. And you'll be wondering that these are people put in the helms of affairs, that the people have entrusted, they, there's a level of trust lives. that we've entrusted to them to be able to, you know, hold public funds or public property. And they are the ones looting with impunity. And even all this, um, all this naming, some of them are still doing it till today. Sometimes you'll see some of these allegations, they'll name, they won't even, they'll refuse to name. We can't even shame, nor prosecute. So how are we ever going to get out of this quagmire? Well, for me, um, I, I, I like this day in history, today's own, uh, of course, all the this day in history. But today's own, I just want to hashtag EFCC. Because mm. I feel with this, res something resonates with me. EFCC should always do this day in history. Mm. They should do, a, they should always do a reflection. <laughs> 
you know, to say this day the in history, history, what did we achieve 10 years ago? What did we achieve five years ago? Mm. To see how they can replicate what they achieved in the past mm. today. You know, I, I was listening to a president of one of the African countries and he was talking about how he will deal decisively with some people who misappropriated funds meant for COVID-19 mm. and all of that. And everybody kept saying in the WhatsApp group I was that, how can we borrow this man for one day? Mm. Wow. Yeah. Over it, to you, it, it, it's yeah. sad, you know, yeah. the criminal dimension of state funds that is still ongoing to date. But you know what? Before we get into the discussion for today, let's take a message from our sponsors. Right mm -hmm. All right, welcome back. It's 2021, and we're asking what are the issues our dear earth is facing? Oil spills, global warming, climate crisis, environmental pollution, the list seems endless. On a day like this, environment, um, environment consciousness uh, gathered to demonstrate support for environmental protection since the observance of World Earth Day began in April 22, 1970. There has been no looking back on getting more people aware of activities to protect the sanctity of the earth. And the first Earth Day of 1970 witnessed over 20 million people trooping to the streets, and it remains the largest single day protest in human history. Today on the show, Real Talk with Kike, we have an oil and gas veteran in the studio. She is the national president of the Nigerian Environmental Society, Dr. Dorothy Bassey, and she will be sharing with us on the topic and restoring the earth and tackling earth crisis and many more other um, discussion that we will be going into. But first, let's take a look at her profile. We'll be right back. Yeah, many thanks for staying with us. Our guest is the national president of the Nigerian Environmental Society, the premier um, environmental society and watchdog of the environment in Nigeria. It is a body committed to advocacy and actions towards environmental protection, amongst other things. It's nice to have you in the studio, Ma. Many thanks for joining us today. Thank you very much. All right. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Ma. <laughs> I know. How are you doing today with the raining and you know all over the place? And at least we should start from there. Well, um, driving down here, I noticed the flooding. It's not so much mm. as okay. it used to be. So definitely, the government is doing a lot okay. to address that because I'm sure you remember some years back, maybe two years back, yes. we had people canoeing right, <laughs> yes, in, front right of, in front of here. Oh, so true. a lot of you know, it's been a massive. So uh, the drainage is much better. Yes, okay. uh, apparently. All right. So our topic for today: World Earth Day, tackling climate crisis amongst many challenges surrounding us in Nigeria. Uh, an average Nigerian or the layman would like to know how serious our climate crisis are in Nigeria and should it be given attention amongst other challenges that we are facing globally when it comes to security and, uh, and the likes corruption and all of that. What, what, what do you have to say to that, ma'am? Well, I'll say first, I'll start by saying when I was working in the oil and gas, I remember, you know, a lot of activities, a lot of production activities, and a lot of interaction with the environment. And I remember I used to tell my colleagues then that after the oil, the environment is all we have. Hmm. So without the environment, really, man is nowhere. Hmm. It is the environment that enables us to do what we do and how we live. And when coming back to your question about is it, is it a crisis, are we in a crisis stage now, I would say emphatically yes. Because now you don't need a prophet, you don't need an academician, you don't need anybody to tell you the changes we are witnessing. Heavier rains, earlier rains, heavier rains, higher temperatures. I grew up um, in Lagos largely most of the time and uh, I remember it used to be really, really cool hmm. you know, back in the day. But now, especially for the younger ones, they cannot survive in a room without the air conditioning. So mm -hmm. that tells us quite a bit about some of the changes. Very subtle changes, but changes nonetheless. Mm -hmm. And so because it is something that is creeping in on us, I think it, it makes it uh, a little bit mm -hmm. different from, for example, a safety uh, incident. There is, there's a fire, there's an accident. You see it immediately. You see the results immediately. But when it comes to the environment, Mother Earth is so gentle, so kind to us, but it has a limit to what we can do. 
and that is where the problem lies. Mm. You know, there's a carrying capacity. When you exceed that, it comes back to us, and that is what we're seeing right now. Mm. Many thanks for that. Wow, well, thank you very much. I, I, I love the explanation you gave. Um, I remember some years ago, there was a lot of noise, a lot of awareness on global warming and climate changes. And I can see that it was taking a lot of, um, it sent a stage in a lot of um, political discussions all across the globe. But because it seems that in, in the years, um, uh, maybe in the 200s, it seems to be cooling off or maybe it's no longer as, um, as scary as they used to paint it. Why is that happening? Is it that um, it's writing itself or they're, they're reducing the rate of awareness? Um, well, I would say that um, there is a gap when it comes to awareness because, but amongst professionals, amongst environmentalists, amongst policymakers, the discussions are on continuously, constantly. But when it comes to the man on the street, when it comes to the community members, when it comes to the grassroots, there's still a lot of work to be done in, in this aspect to let people know that, yes, you have the environment, but every single activity, even in our individual homes, you take a, you, 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 you have food waste. What do you do with it? You just dump it with every other waste. But if you handle some of this, as basic as that is, it helps, it contributes to climate adaptation because that's what it is right now. Climate change is on us. So what we need to do is how do we adapt? How do we continue to live in harmony with Mother Earth. As you rightly said, today is um, World Earth Day. I don't think we should be reminded. However, some individuals have thought it fit to make it, which comes back to what you, you have said. And globally, everybody is talking about it. Mm. I don't think there has been a reduction in the discussions around climate change and climate crisis. And they, now it's being called climate crisis because though discussions and um, observations have been made you know many many years back it is now a priority or it should be a priority especially amongst governments because if we do not have an environment if you do not have an environment well what, what do we have really even the resources we depend on comes from the environment mm. but we need to pay attention the food well, my, my concern would be with the government, like you, the note on which you're leaving, uh, your last uh, speech band, um, what the government needs to do. I, I'm not sure about, for instance, if the drilling law on uh, the Lagos state and some other states equally emulating that, that uh, the anti-drilling law for private individuals who want to sink a borehole. I hear that um, several uh, deliberations are ongoing in states' houses of assembly to bring about a law that would have to, you know, stifle or the rights of people to own a borehole or drill a borehole, owing to what they have said is the collapse or the eroding of the under layers of the, of, of the earth. You know, so I, I, I'm not sure if such a policy is what state governments or government in general should be doing to mitigate the, the crisis. Tell me. Um, well, as you know, in Nigeria, you, every house or most homes you know, would need drill, they often drill a borehole. But like I said earlier, every activity we carry out as human beings has an impact. And so, because there are some um, areas now, when you drill the borehole, you have water a few years, and that's it. Yeah. In the past, you never heard of things like that. Mm -hmm. And so there has to be some control. There has to be some control, some level of control. And again, when you talk about policies and you talk about regulations and you talk about guidelines, some are definitely defined rules and laws. Some are guidelines arising from what you have experienced, arising from things that have happened in the past, arising from experiences, arising from the data that has been collected over time, right? But there has to be some control. If not, it, it becomes chaotic. And as we all know, Nature is designed in a way that, in a, in a very cyclical way, what I mean by that is 
it's 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 very organized from one point yes to it's another. very very organized and that's what as an environmentalist I love about nature. It's very organized. So you cast your vote for that bill? Yes, I will, because there has to be some level of control. You cannot, you need to study the soil. You need to study the, 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 the water levels. You need to be aware how, for how long are you going to use this uh, resource? How many people are going to benefit from the resource? And would it be more beneficial if you have a central a communal one exactly rather than mm. everybody just like what we have with the cars mm. transportation i'm sure you all know that is is one of the major contributors to air pollution mm. all right but everybody owns a car because we do not have adequate Very mass public transportation trans so those are controls that governments put in place if we want to compare the West, um, the developing countries and the West, you will see that we do things so differently. And maybe that is why they, in as much as they are also seeing the effect, but they are not as vulnerable as developing, yeah, so as developing, developing countries. Um, countries. And right. so that's where the urgency is, is really, really now. All right. Many thanks for that submission. You know, world leaders and, and environmental scientists continue to converge on climate changes and its adverse effects. So as an environmentalist, and what, what could be the causes of this climate change or changes and how it turns to crisis, just like you said earlier regarding um, what's it called transportation contributing to some of the pollution that is ongoing at the moment? I would say again that... Every, every activity that man carries out has some impact on the environment. If you want to talk about the level or the degree of impact, that's a different uh, discussion. Every activity, every innovation comes with its negative aspect. Okay, so we know what causes it. One is what I had said, another is uh, um, waste waste management, okay? I passed, um, what is that place called now? After seven up. If you're coming from- Jota. Yeah, exactly. That place has been there for as long as I remember. Mm -hmm. I passed, recently passed there. For some reason, I turned to the right. I was coming back to the island, and I turned to the right, and I saw the huge dump. Oh, God. <laughs> And that's, that's, that's that is supposed to be have a modern recycle, uh, recycling, recycling plant. plant. It's a, it's a it's a dump site. So what's your concern with that? It's a dump site, and nobody has any. I mean, you could have a dump site, but it must be engineered. Okay. It must be organized. It must not be an open thing like what we have. And so, you know, what we do in the Nigerian Environmental Society is we work with government, we advise, we, we, we educate, because, you know, people sometimes don't know the synergy between development and the environment. This is an, an example. Yet we have a, a state ministry of environment. We have the local, uh, the, the local government yeah, offices as well. And we have people working there. Yeah. And we cannot afford to have that kind of thing. First, the emissions coming out from there. Can you imagine what is happening to the people there? We are not even correlating this with the health status of Nigerians. Mm. And if we were to do that, maybe, perhaps, the message would be clearer. Do you understand? Yes. Because now we're having uh, increased rates of asthma. When I was growing up, I never knew what asthma was. But now, every other person has asthma. asthma. There's something contributing to that. Why are we not retracing our steps in, to um, see know, what could be, yeah. you know? You know, in the, uh, in the recent years, I know a lot of countries have focused so much on recycling. Yeah. And in Nigeria, I don't know what, is it a government problem or a people problem? Because we're supposed to be at par with our counterparts in the, in the, in the, in the diaspora or people in our other places where we can actually use some of our waste and reuse them. What is happening? We started, I know some pockets of places were doing it. I was hearing, I know some NGOs that do recycling. What do we need to do to measure up to what we see outside? I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm, uh, 
um, at the police station. <laughs> 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 because we all ask these questions. Mm. But I would like to say here, for example, do you recycle your plastic bottles? Mm. Yes, I do. Do I do. Reserve? I try. Do you recycle your plastic bottles? Yeah. And when you recycle your plastic bottles, what happens? Who takes them off you? And do you know where it ends up? Ends up. Because it's not just about recycling. You need to go through the, the whole process. 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 And of course, you know about the three R's. You know, where you would buy a bottle of water, why don't you get the drum of water? Mm. That way you reduce the, the plastic. Mm. But coming back to your question, um, it is both everybody's responsibility, government and the people. Yes. And again, it starts from awareness. Because, mm. like you said, the, the West, they've gone way, way beyond some of the things we're talking about now. And that is because they value the environment. The environment is a public good. It belongs to nobody and it belongs to everybody. everybody. So they value that. You, uh, uh, summertime, you hardly see people indoors. Everybody is outside because nature has given us so, so much. Unfortunately, it's not the same here. Unfortunately, we do not have parks and things like that that would help you appreciate, appreciate nature. You know, how many people come out of their homes after seven just to sit out, to enjoy the sky, to enjoy the, the, the moonlight? How many people do that? And of course, it's it's a whole lot of, no light. A lot of a lot of issues. <laughs> and bandits and kidnappers are well, one thing hanging I was, around. One thing corners. I would say is that um, a lot of NGOs, very small NGOs. I'm I'm <coughs> talking with the Kids Beach, mm. and they have yes. come to to my place to pick up um, plastic bottles, plastic. and they're using that as a way of empowering the women along the the beach. Mm -hmm. We have very lovely beaches. Tourism is not looking into that area. I'm not, I'm not sure because it's dirty littered by plastics. We have so many things that we can reuse, the, you know, bring them back into yeah. use before final disposal. So again, it comes back to um, awareness, education, and not at, at our level, from the, the kindergarten mm. age. The Let the children, children know that you must look at a waste mm. differently. Mm. That thing we call a waste is a resource to some other person, mm. definitely. Yes. So there's, there's a lot of uh, uh, interactions between the environment, the way man lives, and what we eventually do. But I tell you, there are lots of young environmentalists, young NGOs doing a lot when it comes to recycling. Mm. However, governments can do their own part. And make it bigger. Corporations like Coca-Cola, I understand they have a recycling center somewhere. Uh, I can't remember exactly where it is stationed. But I'll be happy to see in every, every, every local government um, uh, office, maybe, mm -hmm. a, a recycling point. point where not only plastics, you have paper, yeah. you have bottles. bottles. You, 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 you know, for bottles, some uh, creative persons bring a lot of wealth out of these things we are throwing yes. away anyhow in fact we visited nikki art gallery some weeks ago and you can see some artists are even using recycled bottles, bottles. they're using metal scrap metal there's so much they've used out of those things and they're using it to create beautiful oh, art nice. and that's money that's when right. they told us some <laughs> the amount <laughs> some exactly. art was going for oh. i had goose people like yeah, wow exactly. and they're made from recycling i was watching a video of a man who was uh, who built who was into building houses and, and walls with bottles filled with i think uh, he was plastic insulating bottles. the plastic bottles insulating them and then this creates some kind of cool environment Cooler, within yeah, yeah you know uh, creating an estate out of that and it's so huge but a country I know, I don't remember quite n right now, in Africa had banned plastics, the use of plastics. And Rwanda. Rwanda, yeah. right, right, right. Okay. That was Rwanda. And they, do, do you think the Nigerian government should do something similar? Do you think we wouldn't have the wherewithal resources to begin to look at alternative means for packaging that plastics provide? All right, before you answer that, please let's quickly go on a quick break. We'll okay. be back after a word from our sponsors. Many thanks for staying with us, you know, uh, in case you just joined the show. Today's conversation is on World Earth Day, and our topic is restoring the earth, tackling climate crisis. And don't forget that you can be part of this conversation by calling the stu our studio line, um, 08090 
0800-888-7740. It's showing on your screen right now. And of course, you can make your comment on our social handles, Real Talk with Kike, and our Twitter page, Our Talk with Kike. Again, I think you should start from um, the, question. the question that my colleague asked you earlier. Because okay. I, I, while answering, I just wanted to hip, hip, hop, on, hop on the fact that whether or not we have the resources and where we'd have to divert from the use of plastic, huge resources we have in plastics, to paper. Whether we have the... Risk. We're without in capacity, okay, yes. Okay, the capacity, the capacity is there, if you ask me. The will is what we need to perhaps touch on, the political will. Uh, when it comes to regulations, when it comes to policies, I think Nigeria is number one. I attended a meeting once, not too long ago, uh, the United Nations Information Center office, and um, we were talking about treaties, and somebody commented, ah, Nigeria, they've signed all the treaties. It's not enough to sign treaties. It's not enough to have policies that people are not aware of, not to talk about, understanding what it, it says. Nobody wants to be irresponsible. And everybody, I think the first thing is you want to safeguard your life and the life of your, uh, your family. And a lot of these policies are to guide us. They are to help. They are to ensure that we do not expose ourselves to unnecessary risk, as, we, as, as one would say. Mm -hmm. The environment as silent as it is also has a negative aspect. For example, like we mentioned, the air pollution. You know what's happening in Port Harcourt? Uh, I have, a, I have, yes, a suit. Mm. Everybody there is affected mm. because there are no boundaries, there are no borders. Everybody is affected, and we all know where that is coming from. We know the source. So what does it take? Mm. I think it's a question we need to ask ourselves and ask those in, who are responsible in taking action. What does it take? Are we going to wait until the whole of that region turns black because of the suit? Because it's a daily occurrence. Mm -hmm. It's daily. And it's getting worse. An inhalation. It's getting worse. The doctors are talking. The inhabitants are crying out. Children, newborn babies are inhaling this. And we are still talking about politics. Or, or you know, uh, it's not my region or it's my region mm. and things like that. The illegal refinery um, activities is contributing heavily to this. And we do know that information reaching us is that the JTF, they, they, that go to address that. You are addressing a problem and you are creating another one. They obviously have no idea of how their activity, their corrective activity is now creating a, a more harmful outcome. Mm -hmm. So you can see. What does it take? Really and truly, what does it take? That's a very good example of the things we're just talking about. Mm. How do we restore yes. the, the impacted environment? And that is the theme for, for, for this year's uh, mm. um, celebration. So, Ma, listening to you, um, we've been talking about developed countries and our environment. I know that Nigeria signed the Paris Agreement and an international deal um, aimed to tackle climate change in 2017. So it, it would be good if you can bring us to speed on the parts and the roles of our government that they are playing in addressing the climate changes and how other developed countries on this global campaign, especially with the collaboration that we had since 2017, how has that been of um, positive um, added advantage to us since then? In Nigeria, well, I'm sure you've heard about nationally determined contributions. That is to say, what are we doing as a country to meet those goals and those targets? Uh -huh. When it comes to international um, treaties, the international conventions, they are simply suggestions, mm -hmm. recommendations, mm -hmm. there is no legal binding. That's no number binding. one. Yep. So it's dead on arrival, if you ask me. <laughs> it's dead on arrival. So the responsibility is for every country. Yes, we all come together. We all talk about the issues. We all recommend what we need to do. Thereafter, what happens? Who's policing who? Nobody. Mm. Because of the way it is framed, there are recommendations. So if we're going to depend on that, 
I'm not sure we're going to go far. You know, because at the end of the day, it is the country's responsibility. Because, of course, we know it is not one cap fits all. Um, I was going to say that I've seen a lot of um, environmental crises happening across the world. Hurricanes, volcanic eruptions, we're seeing tremors, we're seeing um, 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 lava is coming out volcanic. from the ground, volcanics, all sorts of things. And I know in Nigeria some years ago, the Bar Beach flooded its banks. Mm -hmm. It was, in fact, all the properties on that eco, um, on that axis, were inaccessible. Inaccess banks closed down, people's private properties closed down, and nature was just aggressively fighting back and when those kinds of things happen it costs a lot of money, money to rectify mm. so what would the ministry of environment be we doing why they don't take these things seriously because what it takes to put it back together i don't even think we should channel that into preventing is happening how do we go past that that we want to pay heavily for re re readdressing something that has gone bad. That takes us back to um, the, the question. I think someone mentioned the reclaim, the, the land is being reclaimed yes. to build a city. Mm. I can't remember the name of that city. Eco Atlantic. Eco Atlantic. Aha. Aha. There are many uh, now. Uh, uh, so, yes. So, Ilubiri is on the so third yes. mainland axis yes, of it. Yes, yes. And uh, of course, we do know that we have uh, impact assessment studies, which is to say, if you, if you want to develop, if you want to start a new development, even an old development, you just have a different process. But you need to, you need to carry out studies mm -hmm. to understand how will that impact on the environment. Mm -hmm. Whether that was done or not, we don't know. Because if it was done, there should be a public hearing. Exactly. People who have perhaps information that you do not have would come to the table and have it discussed. Granted, we all need development, but at what cost? Yeah. That is number one. Number two, okay, maybe you've gone far with that development. Is anybody monitoring? Yeah. That's another aspect. Yeah. I, it's not for us here to teach the ministry or to teach the responsible agencies what to do. But every single step, every single process is very clear. And if really something is being done, Please put it in the public space. Let us see. Let us know. Let us be aware. And let's not just all be sitting, waiting for what we do not want to happen to happen. Just like you said, lives will be lost. Money will be, will, 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 will be lost. But most especially life. Nice. And we've had several warnings. Because like the human body, yeah. nature is very, very kind. So I just wondered, you know, we, well, there, are regular, there are agencies that monitor the happenings the in the department. meteorological department. Do we have such in Nigeria? We do. We do. That, <laughs> that <would be>, <laughs> <laughs> we if do. there's a crisis no, about to happen, a land tremor or something. We do. We have the National How Meteorological functional. Department. We yeah. do. I have, yeah. I'm, like, I, I traveled recently, no. and even they'll send you storm alert. Yeah. No, they bring out advisories from that. time to time. They do, they, they, do. They, they bring out advisories. Try living in a place that is prone to, you know, flooding. Okay, I remember they talked about sure. flooding some time ago, yeah, that those in do. the lowlands should move mm. to the yes, highlands. They do. But I'd, I'd, I'd like to chip in here. As much as, yes, you're doing a good job, uh, your organization yeah. would say well done. Yeah. But yeah. I also do not think that um, enough is being done um, in synergizing or harmonizing the departments and organizations, agencies, parastatals that should be responsible for caretaking of the earth. Mm -hmm. One of which is, we might, we all, always, uh, 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 how do I call it, flog or get a backlash on the national orientation agencies saying they're not doing enough mm -hmm. to uh, talk about banditry, talk about uh, the fact that Nigeria doesn't need to inter disintegrate and all. But I also think that on this aspect, organizations like yours mm -hmm. should do more and see how to synergize with these agencies to reach out to more Apologies, people. Um, Masha, we have Henry from... From Benin. All right. Henry, welcome. Hello, Henry. Hello? Yeah, please go ahead. Okay. Henry, what's your My contribution? question is this. I was watching the other day, watching television. I saw how 
fight for chemical products, destroy houses, crops, land. So I want to know if there is no environmental impact assessment act again, whether there's no conscience again or the people ruling us. All right, thank you, everyone, for your um, question. Mom, can you... I'd just like to say that um, the time has come for everybody to take action. It is not one person's responsibility. It is everybody's responsibility. Exactly. Because if you're waiting... Because if, if, you, if you, it brings us back to the question I was trying to ask you. Yeah. I, I don't think people see the comparison yeah. enough. They don't yeah. see the magnitude to yeah. do more. Yeah. So your agencies and your organizations should maybe place, a, do documentaries, do videos, we and do, show the earth do, we, as it used to be, and show the earth as it, it is currently now. is. We, we, we do. We do that by way of workshops, seminars. We're actually having a conference in November in our five home where... Um, everybody's invited, of course. And as you know, uh, environmental issues cuts mm -hmm. across. So in, in the NES, for example, we have lawyers, we have uh, doctors, we have um, engineers, we have scientists. Broadcasters. Exactly. So <laughs> it cuts across, really and truly. Recently, the United Nations Information Center, we're collaborating with them uh, for a massive awareness oh, yes. Campaign, campaign because there is a gap there yes you know unlike the fashion industry the the is it hollywood or bollywood which one is that <laughs> no, <laughs> nollywood. nollywood where you have billboards all over the place oh, we good. want to see that with environmental issues and yeah. environmental topics so that you can bring the message home like you rightly uh, pointed out people are not yet seeing the urgency yes, they are not also seeing the linkages mm. because like i said nobody wants to die you have a generator, for example. Must you put it next to your window? Yeah. You must be oh, able God. to understand that the fumes coming out from there would affect you. That's, that's one example. We need to have things like car pulling. But everybody goes out with their car. In some parts of the world, you, know, you have a dedicated lane for high ve vehicular occupancy, mm. which means that you have... Easy, easier access, access when you have more people in your car. Oh, and no. that is in a bid to reduce, reduce the, the pollution, the use of cars, the pollution coming from the cars. And of course, let's not talk about the traffic in, in, in Lagos. Lagos. Luckily, the toll, toll gates are not working. Yet. Uh, Yet. Yet. <laughs> Can you imagine what will happen, the kind of pollution back. that we will all be faced with? Because the more you are in the traffic stationary, the more, more you the agree. air is being polluted. Yeah, I, many so we are begging agree. Lagos State, please. Yeah, I, I agree with you with what you're saying regarding advocacy, more yeah. awareness. And yeah. I think that this uh, makes me kind of give thumbs up to our producer because yes. when I was doing a bit of research regarding environmental, um, what's it called, um, World Earth Day, Earth I realized Day. that quite a number of, <laughs> Media houses are not even talking about it, you know, and it's, yes. it's enough for us to be <coughs> talking about all of these challenges, but we are not ready to even bring awareness. I understand that we have another caller on the line. Okay. Um, hello? All right. We lost that. So okay. uh, just to collaborate with what you're saying. So, yeah. but, you know, earlier you were talking about how you've partnered with Kids Beach. I hope yeah. I, I got mm -hmm. that right, you yeah. know, and this leads to... Another question that I want to ask is that what's your agency doing in terms of collaboration with um, regulatory bo bodies to ensure the manufacturing companies are compiled, uh, I mean, uh, what's it called, uh, complying. complying with safety environmental standards? Because we all, like you asked earlier, do I recycle my bottles? Maybe the reason why I answered no is because I don't follow through the process. I don't know yeah. where it leads to. Yeah. So what are the safety environment, uh, environmental standards you think that we need to pay more attention to? I'm happy you mentioned the word standards mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. the first thing first, we need to follow a global, universal, acceptable standard. Mm -hmm. And that's where it comes back to the policies and the regulations mm -hmm. that will guide our activities however one cap does not fit all because we've seen that we can actually use 
uh, plastics to, to construct buildings and it mm. is to our, to our uh, uh, advantage. So now we have a bill in the Senate uh, institute to, to have an institute of environmental practitioners of Nigeria, all right, where you have experts, you have prof core professionals, core the environmental professionals, mm. because standards are very important. Mm. You cannot get anything useful if you are doing a different standard from B and Both all of that. And at the work. end of the day, same applies to the studies we carry out, to the data we claim we have. Can that data stand the test of time? If you take it to another country, would it be accepted? And that is why this is very important for us to be able to establish and have a standard that is acceptable. This institute, hopefully, if the bill is passed this year, see the Senate has gone through the first reading and all of that. Again, the understanding, because we, sh we shouldn't really be begging for this. Yes. Mm. Yeah, Should we be. shouldn't, really and truly, mm. if people really understand what it is. But like I said, the safety crisis, you see immediately, 10 died mm. uh, to broke their leg and things like that. But with the environment, unfortunately, it's not like that. But we are trying to address this perception and get everybody out on the street to do their own bit. Because every little action goes towards climate, uh, addressing the climate crisis. All right. Many thanks again for coming on the show today. Thank you. In fact, we are really enlightened <laughs> by yes. the number of uh, things you've shared with us. And I hope that the government are actually listening and I hope, I hope so. that we all can take responsibility because like you emphasize on it's all about individuals. We, we cannot keep pointing fingers at the government. So, no. But before we let you go, Ma, let's discuss some of the trending stories that affect us all, not just environmental issues. These are global issues, you know, <laughs> and one of our trending stories is um, uh, a man assaults a uh, police officer. Well, that the man was armed with what, uh, AK-47 in Lagos, oh, yeah. and this happened on Saturday on the, I think the on the 17th man. of April, yeah, the, the policeman, police and some Nigerians are commending the officer for his professionalism despite being harassed by the civilian. I don't know if you saw the video, but this yes, is the video that playing. is presently um, there, the, okay. exactly, and that's a civilian harassing, um, yes. Yes. The police from a uniform. You want me to say? Yeah, so, yes. Masha, what? That's a video. Yeah. 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 And that's a young man. Yeah. 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 Yeah you know, very, very hostile to men in uniform, maybe because of all the negativity that has, you know, followed them in recent times. People are now just disobeying. This, this, this is quite a heightened aggression, in mm. my opinion, because I don't think the guy pointed the gun at me to, for me to yes. react that way. Yeah. However, my take on reactions, um, citizens' reactions in regards to the police is that if you do not have respect for your police force, these are the kind of things you will see. And respect comes from the way they are being projected, from the way they are being put together. All right? Is it from the uniform, the, the way they speak, the things they do, and the approach abroad, for, go for goodness sake? Who born you not to respect a police officer? Really born you. <laughs> <laughs> Just add to what you said. I, 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 a lot of said this has been happening for a while. It, to really emphasize on that thing, is beginning to um, civilians are beginning to misbehave more since yes, the end yes, of NSAS. NSAS. You know, you are beginning to see people voicing out and attacking these uniformed men. And I think that is where I say that the man exhibited came of professionalism because yes. at the end of the day mm -hmm. like you emphasized on it can never happen in a developed country mm -hmm. and maybe that is where we need to government needs to look into their uh, what's it called incentives welfare. their welfare yeah. and the likes and all of because most times when these policemen address the civilian the first thing that comes to any on any of us as any of our minds is about they want to ask for money money so that makes you a little bit agitated Aggressive. towards them. That makes you <laughs> aggressive. And, and you know, it, it, it's sad that we do not have uh, respect for that uniform. And we do not mm. have respect for one another to even start with. There's no reason why anybody should harass 
or mm -hmm. misbehave like that to anyone not to talk of a uniform. A, a uniform. It's, 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 sad. <laughs> it's sad. So, you know, because of time, this uh, leads us to the second trending story <laughs> that caught our attention, which is the YouTube. Uh, YouTube shuts down Prophet TB Joshua's channel over gay curing claims. Um, I think this happened last week. <laughs> I'm very sure. But uh, Masha had something to say about it. Masha, what's the submission of this when you saw the video? Why did you pick up me on this? Yeah. <laughs> I would have gone with the police own curse. <laughs> yes. Well, well, I mean, it's YouTube. It's their, it's their home. It's, um, they have the right. It's, I mean, you come to my house, I tell you the rules. And if you don't play by the rules, I'll pluck you out. Um, but I also like uh, TV Joe Show's reaction. He, and he, you know, at the end of that, I heard he said, let's pray for YouTube, you know. <laughs> Uh, he didn't take it out on them. He didn't go friends. ballistic. He didn't start, um, you know, harassing them, uh, you know, giving it back to them. Mm -hmm. I like his calm reaction. Let's pray for them. They might not know what they're doing. According to him, T.B. Joshua, on the gay curing claim, I, I think that was a little bit on the extreme. I mean, I don't know. I mean, you don't, I don't, I'm, I'm not a man of God. I mean, so he's, <laughs> he's, he's he to say. cure gay. No, no. I don't know if gay is a disease or a sickness. I'm to, just to wondering, uh, you know, uh, the Christian belief has a certain belief about demons and things inhabiting people. But, um, you know, the medical practitioners will call it some other names. They could say you have multiple personality disorder. A preacher, a man of the cloth will say demonic infestation. Spirit. So I don't know. A therapist to say that you need to go through Assess, some level of mind, psychological you know, assessment. Exactly. So I think everybody is doing it's their own hospital. Mm. What he believes is practicing. But let's hear what an environmentalist would say, <laughs> would say about <laughs> it. <laughs> what do you make of it? I think this is the one that totally flaws me because <laughs> I really um, gay, lesbians, and all of that. It's, it's always been there, if you ask me, for a time. And I do know that according to the holy book that we all cherish, it's not something we want to promote. Mm. And having said that, I rest my case. <laughs> all right, yeah. I don't have a lot of time. I would have given my submission yeah. on this. Environmentally. <laughs> yeah, so another um, third story that caught our attention is the contingent of 144 police officers from Nigeria uh, that are now in Somalia. 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 Uh, Somalia. Somalia. Yeah, it's, I understand that they went there to boost stabilization <laughs> effort in the country. This is according to the African Union mission. Some Nigerians are saying that it seems that the Nigerian police are effective across borders but do not act the same way in the country could this reason be because of incentives just like i mentioned earlier or the fact that they will be paid in foreign currency mm -hmm. I, you know I, I, it's sad mm -hmm. I, I feel like sometimes we give what we don't have you said because it. quite a number of times we are lamenting about we not having enough uniform first uh, uh, what's it forces. called uh, forces in, in the country mm -hmm. and yet we are quick to send our men, <laughs> it, it, well, it's signed. a sorry case in our, in really? our country. Sometimes I really, I ask myself, why am I Nigerian? Why am I born here? Because a lot of this, yeah. <laughs> you know, some of these things, I don't even <laughs> think it's something emotional. There are some, just like he addressed, there's some treaties, there's some things that we have signed as an African country. And that means that when there's a crisis somewhere, they need you to, you know, you be, to be there to address. They probably are doing what they've, uh, you know, signed promised on. or signed on to do. Okay. And I don't blame the soldiers. They're going to take that mission. They probably will pay them better. Policemen, actually. Policemen. Policemen. So Policemen. they'll probably pay them better. So many of them will rather will steadily go for it. So they'll, they'll probably pay them better. And the reason why we are not doing better when it comes to peacekeeping in our country. In our own country. But we are, keep, we are ready to jump at international bodies to help them with their own peacekeeping. Yes. It's unfortunate. <laughs> Masha, do you have anything to say to I'll them? I'll pass on this. I mean, I'll pass on this. Um, we don't have much time. Um, it's, well, like Lolo said, they are just doing their beats. It's what we sign in for and uh, they are keeping to it. I wish them good luck. All right. Many thanks again for being with us today and, of course, enlightening us regarding most of the Doctor. crises, poly, uh, health challenges we are facing, especially the environmental challenges. So, and I think this is where we come to the end of another edition of Real Talk. Uh, mm -hmm. Of course, my co-host and our guest, Dr. Dorothy Bassett, made to this show. And uh, we're so grateful to be here today, that you were here with us today. So we'll come your way next week uh, with real-life topics. Keep being real. And bye now. Thank bye. You. Bye. Thank bye. You. bye.